pretty resilient as long as you're, you know, gentle. You usually just kind of take them at the base of the stem and gently rub them apart. Welcome back to Bethany Urban Farm, um, or should I say Calliope Flower Farm, because I am taking a bit of a, a turn and focusing on flowers this year. I mean, I'm still growing a lot of vegetables, um, but I really have just become so enamored with flower farming. And I've been looking at leasing land around here to kind of expand, but I thought before doing that, I should probably take a trial year just focusing on my garden and uh, setting up a little farm stand. So I'm really excited to take you along on this journey with me um, and show you how I go about learning everything from the very beginning. Um, there's a wonderful community of flower farmers here on YouTube as well as on Instagram. Um, so I'm really hoping that they will welcome you with open arms and uh, yeah, excited to take you guys along for the ride. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I've been doing in the garden um, for the past couple weeks. Um, and yeah, we'll get started. So in this bed, I used to have um, perennials kind of all spread out in here. And what I decided to do, because I loved the look of this garlic coming up in rows so much, um, that is that I was going to do cut flowers in rows kind of in this bed. It was just kind of, I, it wasn't really being put to good use um, so I filled in here it used to be all eroded here there was just like rocks and stuff so I filled in some compost and then put a layer of compost over the whole bed um, and what I did was I had some gladioli in pots so I um, took those out of their pots and divided them up so there's about two bulbs in each um, hole and then I put them just in a row here next to the garlic so I actually haven't marked, haven't uh, labeled most of my bulbs because that's the kind of person that I am. Um, so I don't actually know what kind, of, I'm pretty sure these are gladioli. They might be gladiolus papilio. Um, anyway, so I have these all coming up in a row. Um, it's my first time planting bulbs in a row, so we'll see. I was kind of inspired by dahlias to do this. So um, we'll see if it turns out well. And then I have done that with a couple more things. Um, this is Gladiolus Adam I have in a row here, and then I, I put this Clematis in there, and I'm not gonna move it, because they don't really like to be moved. So, you know, it'll just be in the middle of everything, because even though I love the look of things in rows, I'm still kind of like, I always end up like making my rows crooked and then just plonking something down in the middle of my row that has nothing to do with the row. But, you know, it is what it is. Like I have this row of garlic and then halfway down I ran out of garlic so I have some more gladiolus. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have some red gladiolus here and the atom. And then basically I have them like 18 inches apart rows of bulbs. Um, so far they are mostly gladiolus and I think there's a couple bledilla in there. Bletilla? Bledilla? I'm not sure. Um, and then what I did was I moved these perennials um, all along the front here. So they were kind of spread out and I just moved them. Um, I moved this lavender here. I think it looks pretty good. Um, got some ornamental thyme here. My gypsophila that's never bloomed and that's creeping gypsophila. A potentilla here. Uh, this is a choisia coreopsis. Some little ground covers. Oh. Someone escaped. Um, some Centranthus ruber, which I think will actually look really nice in bouquets. Um, and then my Salvia gorinitica is coming back for its third year, which is really exciting. Um, you never know with this one because it's really borderline hardy here. I think it's like a zone eight and we are zone eight. But you can see there's some little baby green. Oh, love to see that green. 
So my plan for the rest of this bed is either, <laughs> I have this schizo stylus here, um, I think it's called River Lily or something, um, that I'm gonna divide up because it's really root bound and plonk that in a row. And then um, I also really wanna do dahlias this year. It's kind of late to be getting started on dahlias, but I found some local dahlia farms that are selling tubers and I'm just like, oh my God, it's a whole new world. So of course I got Floret Flower Farms um, Dahlia book. And I'm just dreaming about having rows and rows of dahlias, <laughs> but they're very expensive. So anyways, um, my plan when I originally started thinking of doing cut flowers in this bed was to do dahlias. And then I was like, well, I have all these bulbs already. I might as well plant those. And now I'm kind of like running out of space here. So, you know, I love plans, but I also just never end up doing the plan. Um, we finally moved. <laughs> Actually, this is also gonna be really lovely for cut flowers if I can bear to part with some of its flowers. Um, this is the California tree poppy, um, Romnea culturii. Um, I've moved this here because it's actually been in the front yard since we moved in. So it's looking a little rough, but definitely survived the winter and it made a full recovery from its really bad transplant shock that it had when I dug it up originally from my old garden in Vancouver. And then today I actually got this, um, re re um fencer wire trellis that i had put in here um and it's a lot sturdier it was really hard to like get it in my like tiny toyota matrix actually because i could barely like bend it which is good it's what you want in a trellis and um, it's probably doubled the thickness of the fencing wire that i had before it's a nine gauge and i'm pretty sure cattle panels are like a four gauge so it's pretty close to a cattle panel and um, it does rust so i'm gonna have to take it in over the winter but it's okay. Um, they were like $15 for an 8x4 panel, which is pretty good. Um, and I've just raised them quite high off the ground here. They're probably they're probably two feet off the ground. Um, and I have some peas that I'm probably going to just draw some string from the pea up to the bottom of the trellis so they can climb. But when I have tomatoes here, my plan is to put tomatoes when the peas are done. Um, and the tomatoes should be fine growing up two feet without support. Um, I have an extra panel over here that I'm hoping to make an archway with. Um, digging up a bunch of weeds here. Um, just this like brush. It's actually quite nice looking, but it was getting in my way. Found a lovely ant's nest over there, which was fun. Um, oh, and I'm digging up this really horrible, um, it's called Daphne Laureoli, I think. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's called spurge laurel and it's everywhere around here and it like actually alters the pH of the soil so that native plants can't grow. It's terrible. Here's a, here's a sprig of it. So this is bad news. Dig this up if you have it. Um, yeah, and then I sewed poppies in this bed at the back here um, back in February and I thought I saw things coming up but then I started seeing things coming up like everywhere so I'm just worried that it was weeds from the mulch. Um, so I don't know, I haven't really seen a lot of signs of life from the poppies and last year when I planted them I feel like they had some decent foliage by now, so pretty sad about that because I love my poppies. Last year they were one of my favorite things that I grew, um, so that's a little sad. But I also have some sunflowers that I was kind of taking a risk with transplanting these out when our nights were still like just barely above freezing. Uh, and they have done really well. So my plan is whether or not I have poppies here. If I don't end up with poppies, I'll just put some zinnias or cosmos. Um, but I'm gonna have sunflowers climbing up this fence here. The deer love the sunflowers, so I'm a little worried it'll be like a beacon shining to the deer from that lovely property over there to like, come get the free dinner. Um, but you know, fingers crossed, I am still doing the fishing line trick. So hopefully that works. Um, this I'm really excited about. So I will try and put in a clip of what this looked like before I dug out all the weeds. Um, but basically I doubled this bed in size by digging up that Daphne and um, a bunch of bluebells and some grass. And the soil is so good here because um, of all the trees that have just been dropping leaves for like years and years and no one's ever planted in it. So um, yeah, it's looking really good. I planted a row of um, Lacinato kale, curly scotch kale, red Russian kale, and oriole orange chard um, because it's shady over there. So I have most of my, you know, shade tolerant stuff and then probably some flowers at the top 
uh, at the front here. Um, got some of my perennials here in pots. Move these all out because I was sweeping with this new broom that I got. It's a Sri Lankan corn broom, I'm pretty sure it's called. And it works like magic. I just swept this whole patio. It's still, you know, it's not, it's not in great shape, but it looks a lot better. Um, here are carrots. I sewed these probably a week ago, um, and no signs of them yet, but it's been really cold, so not too worried. And then here I um, planted some of these beet starts uh, in amongst the carrots, because those do really well. Um, actually, I kind of messed up on that because really you're supposed to plant radishes um, among the carrots, because beets actually take similar time to carrots, so radishes are good if you plant them because they'll come up before the carrots. but kind of messed up with the beets. It's okay, live and learn. Got a lovely little anemone coming up here with my aster. Um, I moved this Zoshneria. Um, I keep forgetting that it hates being transplanted, so it all kind of flopped over. Um, but I had it in this really ugly trough here. Um, so I moved it into these terracotta pots that I freed up when I took out the gladioli. Um, and then I also put these nasturtiums. I had them over there in that faraway bed, but I was like, oh, it's gonna look really rough just having them ramble and the dog's gonna eat them. So I'm gonna put these up on the deck and then have them kind of spilling over. And um, these are the purple emperor nasturtiums. Really excited. I hope they're actually purple. Um, and this is my chocolate cosmos and I checked today and there is signs of life. So that's really exciting because this one is a zone nine plant and I usually bring it in over the winter, but I kind of left it under the deck, so I wasn't sure if it was gonna make it. I totally forgot that I planted these. These are um, Aranthus hyamalis, um, and I totally forgot that I planted them in the fall, so that was a really nice surprise. They're just like super bursts of joy. Um, and this is my Clematis purpurea plana elegans that got eaten by deer last year, so fingers crossed that doesn't happen again. So yeah, that's basically what I have going on right now. Um, I have some herbs up on the deck. Um, oh, and I'll take you down to my seed starting room to show you kind of the setup that I have going on down there. So this is my laundry room seed starting area. These shelves, it took me so long to find four foot wide shelves for these grow lights, but I'm really glad that I did, even though it's like so large, it's kind of awkward. Um, but they're the perfect length for these grow lights. Uh, so I just, you know, I was trying to be so professional with these nice shelves and then I went ahead and like, just attached them with twine because I couldn't figure out how to attach the chains because they weren't chains, they were like weird wires, I don't know. Um, so I got my basil here, uh, Genevieve's lettuce leaf, uh, it's a little lettuce leaf baby, and some purple opal. Then I have some squash. This one's looking really sad. Um, I actually had my squash, um, a bunch of them rotted, the seeds. So I had them in those um, like cardboard type pots and they just got way too wet. So I replanted them, which is okay. That's why I start since early, just in case I have to resell them. Uh, my tomatoes are looking super happy. Got my Dr. Witchies, uh, my Paul's and blueberries, and pink Berkeley tie-dye. And these are some zinnias. I also didn't have much luck with my zinnias the first time I sewed them, so I just re-sewed a bunch down here. And they're doing doing a lot better. Um, but these ones were from the first batch. Uh, sunflowers, which really need to go outside, <laughs> they're getting squashed, but they, you know, they look pretty happy. Uh, here we have some Cosmos. This is apric apricot lemonade a new one this year, and then some roselle behind them. Uh, Fizzy Rose Picate are these ones, and then some Rubinado. Uh, some more basil, and these are Cardinal Climber Morning Glories, so they're bright red, and I'm very excited for them, and I think the hummingbirds will like them. And then here are my squash that I've, this is kind of my propagating um, shelf down here, because um, it doesn't have any lights, and then I have my heat mats and my domes. Um, but I don't want to get them too moist because I had the rotting issue. Um, but here we have a salmon. This is the pale green and white streaked zucchini. And then uh, this is a new one. This is the custard. It's like custard glurbler englisher or something. I don't know. It's very weird. I think my tithonia seeds are dead. Um, I think the packet might have gotten wet. 
because um, the first batch that I sewed, I actually was like, did I even sew these? Because nothing came up. So I re-sewed the rest of the packet and nothing's come up yet. So I think they got wet, which is really sad because I didn't get any last year and I really wanted some this year, but it is what it is. So yeah, that's my setup. Um, I'm really excited to get a little farm stand set up. So I'll see, I'm kind of trying to like repurpose something that is already existing. I don't really want to build it from scratch because there's so much free stuff on Marketplace and um, like desks and stuff. So I might try and use one of those, we'll see. Um, but I will definitely keep you updated. And um, yeah, my new name, Calliope, mostly I got it from my favorite hummingbird. It's called Calliope Hummingbird. Um, so that was that. And then, you know, also the goddess of poetry and I love that stuff. So yeah, um, thanks for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. I'm gonna try and get back to doing weekly videos. So fingers crossed I can get that, uh, get that set. All right. Be well. I'll see you soon.